prolonged labor is a frequent cause of maternal and perinatal death and disability. It can result in neonatal asphyxia, cerebral palsy, postpartum hemorrhage, uterine rupture, obstetric fistula, and infections. Prolonged labor means that the birth progresses too slowly. Causes Prolonged labor can be caused by the five Ps. Power At normal birth, there are three to five contractions, each lasting at least 40 seconds in 10 minutes. Pelvis, or passage, is rarely the cause of prolonged labor, but if the woman has a malformed pelvis or a pelvis that is not fully developed due to young age or malnutrition, consider delivery at a referral hospital. Passenger. The normal presentation is cephalic, and the normal rotation is occiput anterior. Sometimes there's a malposition like occiput posterior. Sometimes the head can be bent to the side, or sometimes there's a malpresentation, for example, brow or face. Psyche. Anxiety and stress can cause contractions to weaken or stop. Make sure the woman feels in safe hands and is treated respectfully and gently. Passing urine. Since a full bladder affects uterine contractions and can complicate the descent of the fetal head through the pelvis, it's important to remind the woman to pass urine every other hour throughout the active phase, first stage of delivery. Also ask the woman to pass urine before starting to push. The active phase of the first stage starts when the cervical dilatation is 5 centimeters. At this point, the labor care guide should be started. Follow the instructions in the practical procedure on expected dilatation and when to examine. Labor care guide. The labor care guide is replacing the partograph and should be started in the active phase of first stage of labor when cervix is dilated 5 centimeters or more. The labor care guide allows women without risk factors for complications to progress slower than one centimeter per hour, giving different time estimates for each centimeter to prevent unnecessary interventions. The alert column presents the abnormal labor observations that require further assessment and action. If labor observations do not meet any of the criteria in the alert column, Labor progression and care should be regarded as normal, and no medical intervention is necessary. You should circle any observations meeting the criteria in the alert column. This should help highlight those observations that require special attention. It's important to monitor the well-being of the woman and her fetus and the progression of labor by applying the Assess, Record, Check plan at each assessment throughout labor. Assess the well-being of the woman and her fetus and progress of labor. Record labor observations. Check reference and compare labor observations with reference values in the alert column. Plan by deciding whether and what interventions are required in consultation with the woman and document accordingly. See action card for more information on the different alert values for the active first stage. An intervention is required when the progression is slower than these intervals. Alert value for second stage is more than three hours for women giving birth for the first time and more than two hours for women who have given birth before. If labor progresses as expected, cervical dilatation should be assessed every four hours unless otherwise indicated. It's important to adapt the frequency of assessing cervical dilatation to each clinical case, which will depend on the results of labor observations and status of the woman and the fetus. A standard duration of the latent first stage can vary widely from one woman to another. The duration of the active first stage usually does not extend beyond 12 hours in first labors and usually does not extend beyond 10 hours in subsequent labors. If labor extends beyond 12 hours, 
a second labor care guide form should be commenced. Prolonged second stage. The second stage of labor starts when the cervix is fully dilated, 10 centimeters. The head should now descend to the pelvic floor. It's best to wait with the pushing until the head is at the pelvic floor. But if it is not after two hours, pushing can be started. The pushing is the most stressful and dangerous part of labor. At strong contractions, pushing should not last for more than one hour. If cephalic presentation and the head is not palpable more than one-fifth over the pubic bone, a vacuum extraction could be attempted after one hour. Vacuum extraction is a basic emergency obstetric and neonatal care signal function and should therefore be mastered by any skilled birth attendant. The most important indications for vacuum extraction are prolonged second stage, maternal exhaustion, and fetal distress. In the second stage, the fetal heart rate should be assessed after each contraction. If the fetal heart rate is above 180 or below 100, roll the mother to the left side and continue to assess fetal heart rate. If it is unchanged after a few minutes, delivery must be expedited. To perform vacuum extraction, the head must be well engaged, cervix fully dilated, membranes ruptured, and the gestational age must be 36 weeks or more, although pregnant women at a gestational age of less than 37 weeks should be delivered at a hospital. The risk of perineal trauma and minor trauma to the head of the baby is increased at vacuum delivery. Following is a structured approach to vacuum delivery. Ask for help. Address the patient. Tell her and her companion what you're about to do while you continue to prepare and tell her that you need her to cooperate and keep pushing when there's a contraction. Abdominal palpation. The head should not be palpable more than one-fifth over the pubic bone. Bladder empty. Check that cervix is fully dilated. Contractions. There must be contractions to succeed. Determine position. Locate the posterior fontanelle, triangular shaped, with your index finger. This is important information before you can place the cup correctly. Equipment ready. Delivery set. Oxytocin for intramuscular injection to the mother after delivery, as well as misoprostol and tranexamic acid, towels, neonatal resuscitator, and vacuum extractor. Flexion point. Most cups are three centimeters from the center to the edge. Place the edge of the cup at the tip of the posterior triangular fontanelle. Feel for vaginal tissue between the cup and the fetal skull before and after applying suction to avoid trauma to the vagina. Gentle, steady traction with no rocking during a contraction and with the first contractions downward. During the following contractions, more upward. Halt in between contractions. Halt and abandon if three pop-offs or if three pulls show no progress, or if delivery is not achieved 30 minutes from application. Intact perineum. When the head is delivered during the next contraction, protect perineum with one hand. Squeeze the index finger and thumb together at the posterior part of the head to prevent stretching of the perineum and lift the head with your third finger upwards and away from the perineum while the other hand keeps the head from coming too fast. An incision is only rarely needed. When the jaw is reachable, release the vacuum and remove the cup. Remember that it's not recommended to apply manual fundal pressure to facilitate childbirth. A prolonged second stage can often be managed with vacuum extraction.
If the procedure is not possible or fails, the woman should be referred to a facility where a caesarean section can be performed.